Welcome back to this very special edition of Houston Life. We are so glad to be coming to our viewers today from one of our favorite places in Houston, the Houston Zoo. It's so nice. And we're inside the zoo's new Birds of the World Complex, where you can see species from around the world all in one place. Okay, so if you're just tuning in, uh, you got to go back and watch because I just got to hang out with some of the newest members of the zoo, those cute little fluffy gray baby flamingos. Are they so soft? Are they as they're, soft as they look? They're so soft. And Rick, who's the bird curator, here, I was like, is it okay if I touch them? He was so <laughs> generous with his time, and you're about to see him again because Lauren Kelly and Rick are hanging out at Flamingo Island where, you know, the grown flamingos are hanging out, and they have finally turned pink. So what's up, Lauren? How you doing? Well, here's something else I never thought that I would be doing at the Houston Zoo, but we're so excited for the Birds of the World exhibit to open to the public this Friday. Hey, Rick, you know, thanks for coming straight over here after chatting with Derek. It was quite the run, but I made it. <laughs> now, you guys were with the baby flamingos, but guess where we are right now? We're out we're in, in our... the South American exhibit. Yes, yes, and we've got this wonderful flock of 53 Chilean flamingos that are just the icon of this South American aviary. Now, I've got my waders on, but I can kind of feel through. The water's a little chillier. Is that, is that kind of what they're acclimated to, or are they okay in warm weather, cold weather, whatever the case? They are. These birds are amazing. And I said they're Chilean flamingos. They live in the Andes mountain range in South America. Okay. So they can live in very high elevations where it is really cold. And you know, back in the, the what winter of twenty one, yeah. when we had freeze. that freeze and we had snow on the ground, yeah. the birds were out here in the pool, and snow was up on the beach. Maybe they like the cold plunge. Yeah, they do. They do. <laughs> so I am noticing though that these flamingos, but there's definitely more than just flamingos. But these flamingos are tending to group together. Is that also common? Yeah, that's very common. And you know, it's it, and you see many of them down in the water, just kind of yep. you know. And they're filter feeders, so they're they're filtering through the water to catch, you know, zooplankton and algae and stuff, and for to help keep them as pink as they are. Okay, that was my next question. What makes them that pink? It is what they're eating. It's the shrimp, the krill, the zooplankton that has that rich red color. And you guys take a look at their feet as well. Their feet are just as pink, if not pinker, than the feathers on their body. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So they're amazing birds. We also have wood storks in here, the southern lapwings, you know, the shovelers, the punateel. So the roseate spoonbill, though, are, do people confuse those with flamingos sometimes? We do hear that they're baby flamingos. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> they're a similar look, but they definitely do not compare to the black beak that the flamingos have. And they tend to be taller, too, right? The roseate spoonbills? No, the flamingos. Oh, the flamingos. Oh, yeah. The flamingos are much taller. Okay, here's another silly question, but I'm dying to know, and I probably should have learned it in school. Why do they stand on one foot? Well, they stand on one foot because if you stand on both feet for too long, it, your feet start to hurt. So okay, you stand, that makes total everybody sense. Everybody stands up with one foot, <laughs> stands up with another foot. Yeah, so. Okay, where we're standing right now, this is fairly shallow. I mean, the water's only up past my ankle, but you said closer to that side, it definitely does get deeper. It does, and you know, flamingos love to swim. Okay. So they get over in that water where it's deep enough, their feet don't touch, okay. and they just paddle along. Now, do all of the birds in this exhibit kind of feed on the same thing, or is there something Thing for each of the different species. We always have specialized diets for each individual in here. Okay. So, you know, every, there are some birds we'll eat out of other bowls, but most everybody gets their own diet. We'll feed krill and uh, flamingo diet to our flamingos. Okay and some bugs to the lapwings and the geese. So. And you were also telling me that this petrified tree over here is how old? That's about 100 years old. 100 years old. Yeah, it was done by an artist back in the early 20s, as well as part of this waterfall. Yeah. And it has been an icon of the Houston Zoo for about a, a long century. time, yes. which is incredible. Give us one more fun tidbit about the flamingos. Is there something else that we don't know about them that we can come out here and learn about? Um, <laughs> well, you know what? It does take them about two years to turn fully pink. If we go closer, are yeah. they going to run away? Can yeah. We see? So 
This one here is Astro. It was okay. it was a flamingo chick <laughs> in ninth, uh, in 2022. I feel like we should just follow them. You yeah. guys, if you want more information on the South American Birds of the World exhibit, HoustonZoo.org. Rick, thank you yes. so much. This You're is welcome. quite the experience. Maybe I can practice balancing on one foot with them as well. Maybe. But for now, I'm, I'm going to stand with <laughs> two. <laughs> All right, you guys, this is incredible. We can't wait to show it to the public when it opens on Friday.